Okay, here we go, Fortran. I'm going to write a code um, using uh, Fortran 95 standards because that's just what I know. Um, it looks like Emacs is telling me that I'm, it's going to use Fortran 90 highlightings. really doesn't matter. Um, the first thing you want to do is do the whole hello world thing. So program main, um, end program main. Uh, I just hit tab to do that. Um, and then I'm going to write um, to standard out. Uh, Newton, Raphson, oops, uh, using Fortran. Okay, so if I try to type in nr.f95, okay, first, even if I give it the, uh, the uh, high up, I say n. it's going to say all of these commands are not found. Why? Because if you remember in Perl, we typed in use the environment Perl. In Python, we said use the environment Python. In R, we said, well, we used R script. In Ruby, use the environment Ruby. Fortran has no environment. So what you actually have to do is you have to, I, on Linux, you have a G Fortran compiler. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile F95. And what it's going to do is it's going to create this function called a.out. And so if I run a.out, Newton wraps and using Fortran. And so those are two steps. You have to actually compile the code, and then you can actually execute the program. Okay, so now we can start doing um, some stuff here. So um, first things first, we have to get the input argument. So num args equals, and I'm going to use command argument count, which is a built-in uh, Fortran code. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and compile this code here. And it let me compile. Interesting. Typically you have to tell the code. Uh, I wonder, oh, you know what it is? I, oh, I know what it is. Hmm. It's just like, uh, it's just like, uh, what is that, Perl? was it Perl? Was it Perl? Yeah, use strict and use warnings. You want to type in implicit none. Watch this. Boom. Symbol num args at one has no implicit type. Okay. In in all of the routines, we would do like as double, right? Or we would do, um, what were the other functions? We would do like, you know, 2f, or we would do um, float, you know, and we would do stuff like that, right? And then the Python interpreter would say, hey, that's a float. Well, guess what? In Fortran and C++, you can't do that. You actually have to tell the computer that num args is a variable and that it is an integer, and then it will let you compile. So now if I do write star comma star num args, I think it'll say, oh, I have to compile, and see here's the problem, I'm gonna compile the code again. There you go, zero input arguments. If I type in a five, one input argument. So now what I can do is I can say if num arguments is not equal to zero, then um, get the input argument else say whoops not enough input arguments and then I'm gonna do I think it's pot I think it's a stop and if let's try that a dot out whoops not enough run it just stopped five it didn't actually stop it just ran this line of code and didn't do anything so now we need to get the arguments what I want to do is I want to say um, I have to do a couple things. First, what I want to do is I want to make a character uh, with a length of 32 called arg. I'm going to call it in arg. And then I'm going to call the function get arg, one comma arg. So I'm going to get the first input, I'm going to get the first input argument and put it into arg. And then what I'm going to do, and this is a little bit complicated, so I need to go over what the write function does. So um, the write function, write star comma star, means write, uh, I'm going to say word, it's going to, it means write the word to star location, which is standard out in, in star format, which is just default. Okay. So if I type in write 
location, comma, format, word, that means it's going to write to a completely different location with a completely different format. Now, the read function, star, comma, star, word, is exactly the opposite. What it's going to do, it's going to read the star location in the star format and put it into the word. So if I type in read arg star x0, what does that mean? It means read arg in the default format and put it into x0. And I'm going to try and compile that. It's going to give me an error. Why? Because arg has no implicit type, which doesn't make any sense because I told it that I had a type. And then x0 has no implicit type. So first, let's fix x0. Uh, let's see. Um, you can do double precision, I think. Um, but double precision is just eight, eight bytes. So I just like to do real eights. You can do real fours and real twos. Um, I'm just going to do real eights. Um, technically, a real two is an integer because an integer is two bytes. But anyway, um, let's see if that compiles. Yeah, it says R. Oh, that's why. Because it's in arg, not arg. In arg. There we go. Oh, in x arg. I type too fast. Not enough input arguments. Boom, it worked. Okay. Um, so if this, all this craziness worked, and we broke out of this if statement, we can um, write star comma star initial guess equals x0. Let's see if that works. Sweet. Okay, so how do we put x0 into an array? Um, well, we have to make an array, and unfortunately, um, dynamic allocation in compilable languages like C++ and Fortran gets really, really complicated. You can make a function uh, allocatable and dynamically allocate vectors and use append functions, uh, but these are dangerous in C++ Fortran. So instead what we're going to do is we're actually going to pre-allocate with 100 spaces and hope for the best. Hope that we don't overrun. So now that x hitter has 100 spaces, we're going to say, hey, put x0 in the first one. And then we need to call the function like this. And crap, I forgot to make it. Okay, so we need to make a subroutine. So subroutine f inputs and outputs in Fortran are kind of weird. Um, in most functions you can type in return and stuff like that. Um, in C++ you can use pointers. I think in, I think in Fortran you can use pointers too. Um, I just don't think they're as common. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do air out and uh, x in so that that kind of tells me that air out is the output and x in is the input and then I'm just going to compute um, the stuff x in minus one squared and then again it's just like uh, just like Python and stuff like that where you have to use star star and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the subroutine uh, f prime air out x in real a times a and you have to declare everything. Everywhere you have a function or a subroutine, you need to tell the computer what types of variables these are, otherwise it won't work. Um, so I think this will work. Unexpected end of file. Oh, I forgot to do end. Uh, error has no implicit type. Okay, so on this line of code, line 38, I forgot to tell it what error was. So error is, an, in, is a real eight. There we go. Okay, so, oop, not enough different arguments. 10. So it looks like it's working. Okay. Um, now we can do the while loop. So, uh, do while uh, is how you do while loops in Fortran. Absolute value of error is greater than 1e minus 5. 
um, then I'm going to end do. And what do I want to do in this loop? Well, I want to do a lot of things. I want to write to standard out um, x iters. Ooh, I need to use a counter in here too, don't I? So I need to make a uh, integer counter. I'm going to say uh, counter equals one. So I'm going to write the current value of the counter. Then I'm going to say, uh, let's see, x current is x iters of counter. Then I'm going to say x next is, oh crap. You have to call the functions first, don't you? So you're going to have to say x current minus f result over f prime result. And then you're going to say uh, x iters of counter plus 1 is x next. And then you need to call. So hold on, we need we need to do all. We need to call the function and put and and put the current value in the x in function, and then the f result will be the output. And then we need to call the f prime function f prime result x current. So this is kind of like bash too. Um, and then x next, and then x iter iter is x next. Um, I need to do counter equals counter plus one, and then I need to call the function again with x next instead of x current and then reevaluate the error and then actually I can just put error in there can't I and that's not going to compile because I need to define a bunch of things um, let's see x next needs to be defined x current needs to be defined I think that's everything right uh, let's find out nope uh, f result f result f prime result it worked sweet all right, um, now what? GNU plot. So we need to make a file. So I want to call system rm iter data fortran.txt. I want to open the file. Unit equals 93. That 93 can be whatever you want. The file is this. Uh, io stat equals i error. I want it to run. Uh, that i error is going to be a flag that's going to run and um, tell me if an error is found in opening the file. So I'm going to say if i error does not equal zero, then write to standard out error opening file and then just stop. Um, is end if coding so much already and coding for like the past two hours. Okay, so I've opened the file and so now what I can do is I can do write and remember what I was saying before, that first star is the location. So I want to write to 93 and I can just go ahead and hit star and then hit F um, counter. So I'm, I'm doing the default format, but I, uh, the file um, location is 93. Um, so I'm going to compile this and run it and then if I open here, I should have iterfortran.txt. And so now what I can do is I can do, uh, you know, what I was, you know, what we were doing before. So I can do call system. And uh, I'm going to do a couple things here. So just because this is kind of complicated. So it's going to be, I'm going to do out arg. Um, and then I'm going to make a out arg. No, I'm going to get, I need a, I need a lot of characters. So I'm going to do 128. And I'm going to say out arg is, and so normally I'd like to just do GNU plot dash e um, plot. Here, let's just go to bash and copy that command. Bah, nope, it's not a, uh, is this an R right here? It is. Here it is. Let me pause this real quick. Okay, sorry about that. I got a phone call. Um, so here's the command here. So if I just copy this and put this here, okay. Um, the problem is I need to wrap this in uh, quotations. But then if you notice, everything gets kind of um, jumbled together. Um, so what I'm actually going to do um, is I'm going to I'm going to separate this into into a couple places. I, I, I wonder. I feel like I should be able to do this. So if I want quotations, I just do quotation quotation, which gives me that'll give me a quotation, and then. If I do quotation tick mark and then tick mark quotation, 
and then Will that work? No, see this 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 just screws me up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do multiple strings. So uh, slash slash it's can it's how you concatenate strings. I like that better. Yay! Oh, minus five. Wait, what am I? Oh, because I'm plotting iter bash. I meant iter fortran. Ah, shoot. I gotta recompile it. Unreadable? What are you talking about? Oh, whoops. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so what did I just do? So I took GNU plot and I had to put a quotation over here, but I needed, I actually need, if you notice from the bash um, script, I actually need a quotation here. And then I need a tick mark here, so I have a quotation tick mark here. And then I need a tick mark here, so I have a quotation tick mark here. And then I actually need a quotation here, so I have quotation, quotation. Now you would think that I would just be able to like, I don't know, get rid of this and this and then this guy over here but I, f I don't know I feel like I've done that before now nah, see it freaks out it doesn't like it I mean this is the only way I could get it to work so I'm just sticking to it and there we go so that's all all done okay so next up is C++ which again is a compilable language which just means it's going to take a minute to um, compile all that, um, but uh, we will uh, walk through it slowly just like we did with Fortran. I guess we didn't really walk through Fortran slowly, but uh, 17 minutes is a pretty long time. Um, here's the code again. Uh, post in the comments if you have questions. All right, good luck. Here comes C++.